So good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about mechanical transduction of immune cell in initial inflammation. So let's briefly yeah, increase your memory about uh, immune cells. So this is immune cell system from the hematopoietic stem cell. As you can see, so hematopoietic stem cell we can divide like three progenitor like lymphoid, myeloid, and megakeratocyte erythrocyte progenitor. The four lympho lymphoid progenitor they can differentiate to T cell. B cell, NK cell, and then myeloid progenitor, as you know, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, monocyte, and dendritic cell. So, when we talk about the uh, innate immune cell system, we always looking at this a myeloid progenitor cell derived with immune cell like neutrophil, monocyte. The monocyte, when they are infiltrated to tissue, they are polarized to macrophage, right? And dendritic cell is residual immune cell for initial immune response. And the eosinophil and basophilic cell, depending on their target, like bacteria or virus, we can name it like that. And then in t this megakeratocyte erythrocyte progenitor, erythrocyte is RBC, as you know, red blood cell, and then like kerocyte, they are special cell, a special immune cell for defense. So you you have to remember about this immune cell from your blood. And then when we call lymphocyte, we just name it T cell, B cell, NK cell from the lymphoid progenitor. And then if we call peripheral blood monocyte cell another name, aka A granulocyte. A granulocyte means that A without granulocyte, no granule. So, which means this has some granule. So, in the others, they don't have any granule. So, we can call it A granulocyte, including monocyte and dendritic cell, plus lymphocyte. And then we can say granulocyte is Immune cell, when they have certain kind of granule, granule means some kind of sticky molecule or sticky component. And another term is PMNS. Yeah. And then when you when you call leukocyte, leukocyte it except these two immune cell, we can call other are leukocyte. But this is very easy to memorize from this classification. When you look at this, actually this is a more uh, natural classification from the hematopoietic stem cell to the other immune cell. So lymphocyte projector cell, the NK cell, and the small lymphocyte differentiate T lymphocyte, B lymphocyte, and plasma cell. The plasma cell also same derived from the same B lymphocyte, but when B lymphocyte, they are infiltrated to tissue, they can polarize to plasma cell. So when you look at some subcutaneous tissue and or calvaria, and then when you see some like a dot 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 structure, some um, some of them are plasma cell. And then when you look at the common myeloid projector cell, the myeloid projector cell, they can differentiate through the myoblast, basophil, neutrophil, eosinophil, monocyte, and then. When, the, when, when this monocyte infiltrates to tissue, we can call it as macrophage. And then mast cell, erythrocyte, megakeratocyte, they are another derived from the myeloid progenitor cell. And then when we, when we say this is a lymphocyte, it's easy. But in case of leukocyte, this and like up to this, we can call as a lymphocyte. A leukocyte and other like RBC is another term. So let's let's imagine if your skin is injured, so what happened? The first thing is that 
uh, your residual immune cell they can react immediately and then they start to secrete some chemokines and inflammation to get some help from your neighbor immune cell from the blood vessel right and then what ha what happened to the blood vessel and then their immune cell in the blood so t let's say this is some uh, blood vessel near your injured tissue and then the bottom one is your injured site okay and this is some uh, this is your immune cell yeah suspension immune cell cell membrane and this is some endocellular cell consists of blood vessel okay as you know endocellular cell consists of blood vessel and then from the very strong cell to cell interaction there is not much of leaking to the tissue okay so they naturally they flow without but sometimes they are rolling so when they roll and then they this immune cell including with uh, not RBC but most of the leukocyte leukocyte means including lymphocyte P, T cell, P cell, D, P cell, T cell, NK cell, plus macrophage, monocyte, and neutrophil, this kind of cell, which they have to go to the tissue. They have this kind of integrins or cell surface receptor, like glycoprotein, PSGL1, L selectin, alpha 4, beta 7, integrin set. Alpha 4 beta 1, aka VL4, G protein complex receptor, and LFA1, Mark 1, and another thing. And then from the rolling, and then endocellular cell, sometimes, occasionally, they can express this kind of E selectin, P selectin, PAMD, MAD cam, and VCAM1. They have very uh, complicated name, but just you can imagine this is some kind of signal to attract this kind of immune cell to the tissue okay so when certain injured site they start to secrete some chemokine to the endocellular cell and then when they when they reach they endocellular cell they start to express this kind of uh, tethering and rolling ligand on their outer surface and then this suspension leukocyte Sometimes they are attaching and then they feel like, oh, maybe it's time to infiltrate to the inside of tissue, they feel like. And then, from, especially from the chemokine, chemo attractant through the G protein complex receptor. So from this chemo chemokine receptor, they activate it. Okay, leukocyte is activated and then Suddenly, during the rolling, they stop and then arrest through this kind of four major integrin set and then this kind of um, ligand called ICAM and MADCAM and VCAM. So from their strong uh, integrin and ligand affinity, actually from the mathematical or theoretical uh, and then experimental analysis, this kind of RS interaction is 1,000 times higher than this kind of rolling and tethering. But this is some natural phenomenon without any inflammation. But after inflammation happened and then chemokine was, chemokine activate the immune cell and then they start to arrest. And then suddenly these endocellular cells also, they shift from this kind of uh, normal ligand to the attractive ligand I came and MD came and then they arrest and then they are ready for go inside of the tissue through this endocellular cell right and then what will happen maybe this uh, leukocyte or endocellular cell they cross talk each other and then especially the immune cell talk to endocellular cell like Okay, I'm ready. Please open your gate. And then the, this cell to cell gap is loosely loose, and then this immune cell can infiltrate to the tissue. Okay, 
So when you imagine the what will happen through during the inflammation, you have to imagine this kind of how the leukocyte can interact the endocellular cell and then infiltrate to the tissue. So as you can imagine, so this this is some another to, another animation to describe what what will happen to from the injur, injury. Cellular enrolling. So this is some uh, bottom one is selecting and upper one is sialon machine. Okay, feathering and rolling, and then when chemokine signal they are accepted through this uh, inflammation chemo attractor like this air, red arrow, when they are reach to the GPCR, G complex protein, G protein complex receptor. So this G, -po G protein complex receptor is a receptor for G protein complex. G protein complex, the major category of inflammatory chemical attractor. Okay? So as you can see, from the, your damaged tissue, they, are, they start to secrete this kind of inflammatory chemical attractor a lot. And then when this chemical attractor reach to this uh, tethering or rolling immune cell, they start to activate it and then arrest through this I chem and we chem one and then uh, active. So here bending integrin, right? Which means they are not activated. But when they activated from the initial chemo attractor, they straight and then they have strong affinity. Okay? And then they arrest, stop, and then what will happen? They penetrate to endocellular cell, endocellular cell gap through the proteolysis. So polarization and diapetosis, which means they are shrinked and then they are ready for penetrate. Okay? So through this mechanism, you can imagine, you can imagine that mechanical transduction, this very weak binding, very strong binding. And then when they are binded, maybe actin or any kind of internal organ they are restabilize, right? Because this uh, ligand and integrin interaction may might affect the uh, inside of integrin tension or other way. So you can imagine one point. Okay, integrin in ligand integrin affinity maybe they can affect the uh, internal actin or microtuber structure or that tension. And then they have to reshape by themselves. So when cells are reshaped, they cannot, they should self-reshape, right? There is no other source. So which means from the internal in actin or microtuber, they have to remodel. So there is why this affinity between integrin, the cell membrane, and the ligand is very important to start the reshape of the cell. And then, when they penetrate this small gap, they feel some stress, especially shear stress, right? And then, when they are penetrated, they have to uh, go through, they have to penetrate also this kind of tissue of ECM to reach this kind of tissue. Also, they also feel stress, especially shear stress. So in each step, you can imagine certain kind of force uh, can mediate or can boost the immune response. So maybe from the auto reprogramming, when they, when this immune cell have high affinity to the endocellular cell, it, they feel like, oh, it start to secrete immune response. You start to secrete interleukin or inflammatory or anti-inflammatory signal a lot compared to normal rolling and tethering situation, right? And then, especially when they go through this small gap, so this is some nucleus. And then this gap is just nucleus. And then when this gap is larger than nucleus and they are very a lot, the blood should can be leak. It's not good, right? So this gap should be 
uh, minimum for letting the cell penetrate this endocellular cell junction. They should not be larger than nucleus or two sides of nucleus. So definitely the cell should feel high stress. And then also this kind of high stress can boost some immune cell response, right? So we can mimic this kind of high response using osmotic pressure, or ultrasonication, or stretch, or shear flow when we have some microfluid machine. So we can imagine this kind of situation. So why in iTrain we are going to use some kind of mechanical force to induce more inflammation to mimic this kind of cell, immune cell penetrating situation. And then after finishing cell-cell interaction, endocell-cell -endo -cell interaction gap, and they, when they reach the cell ECM, also this cell should penetrate ECM structure to reach to this damaged tissue. And then through this uh, journey from the endocellular cell nearby to the damaged tissue, the cell starts to feel stiffness or stress relaxation or ECM remodeling. So for mimic this one, we have to make some design of a hydrogel using different stiffness, different stress relaxation, or light activated or self integrated hydrogel. Okay. So yeah, when so when you look at this kind of immune cell journey in our eye trend, we have to focus how we how the how cell feel the stress or how cell feel the ECM, the strength, the stiffness, and stress relaxation. So from the summary of the table, they uh, people uh, people previously study about how the disease can be mediated by key immune effector cell and then propose leukocyte receptor for endocellular cell traffic signal. So this is some uh, ligand which are located to endocellular cell. And then integrin is located to leukocyte immune cell cell membrane. Okay, and GPCR is G protein coupled receptor which are receptor of chemo attractor. What is chemo attractor? CXC, so CXC, CXCR1 means this CXC receptor 1 is ready for accepting CXC cytokine. And CXCR2, uh, receptor 2, PAFR, I don't know the full name, but this blah blah receptor, they are ready for accepting PAF. Okay, like this, uh, you, you can see many kind of receptor which can accept the, receive the chemical, chemo attractor from the endocellular cell or damaged tissue. So you can imagine, let's say this acute inflammation, myocardial infarction, neutrophil is a ma major immune cell. This is, neutrophil is one type of the leukocyte, right? And this neutrophil have LFA1 and Mark one integrin, and then through this PSGL1 ligand, they have strong interaction, and then this neutrophil are activated by this kind of, uh, neutrophil have this kind of receptor, at CXCR1, CXCR2, PAFR5, PRT1, and then this from the major four receptor, they accept the chemo attractor, and then the neutrophil, they can go to the myocardio, I mean heart tissue for having this kind of myocardial infarction. So when you modulate the neutrophil infiltration to the heart, you can decrease or you can change the disease phenotype. Right? And in case of Th1 cell, uh, so let's say as atherosclerosis, the major key effector cell is monocyte. When they have, they have VLF4, and then 
from the endocellular cell ligand, PSGL1, through this chemical receptor, when, when these monocytes are activated, they have a major player for inducing atherosclerosis. In case of hepatitis in liver, CDA cell, uh, CDA T cell, they have this kind of integrin, and through this ligand, after accepting the chemical attractor from this receptor, they induce hepatitis a lot. Okay? From the asthma, like this, uh, any kind of cell you can imagine. So yeah, so when you when you look at some disease phenotype, you always think about which kind of immune cell is the most important player to induce so initial immune, immune response. And then when you regulate this immune cell through the some inhibitor or ECM or drug, and then you can moderate the symptom. So today we are focusing on T cell and ICAM1 binding. So this is some T cell step one. They are rolling and tethering, and then through the blood flow, and then especially when they are activated by chemo attractor, like this. This is some yeah. This is some this kind of structure is G coupled. What is that? Yeah, G protein couple receptor. This G protein couple receptor, they are accepting this kind of CCL17 or CCL127, which is some chemo attractor from the damaged tissue. Right? And then this chemo chemokines they reach to the this immune cell to the G protein couple receptor, as well as this chemokine also affect the endocellular cell to show the, this VCAM1 and ICAM1 ligand, which can induce strong affinity to this LFA1 and QLA4, which is some integral set of the T cell. Especially LFA1 is an alpha L and beta 2 integral set. Okay? And then when they stick to the endocellular cell strongly, so these this are ready for migration through this endocellular cell, endocellular cell gap, and then in also from this mechanism, VA4 and NFA1, which is uh, two major integral sets, they uh, fill the endocellular cell, and then they go through this gap, and then reach to the injured site. But this is some basic T cell skin homing. And then from the T cell, also, T cell needs some antigen presenting present cell, which is after apoptosis or after engulfing the bacterial virus, this APC cell they produce some card to the T cell for saying that T cell you have to kill, you have to recognize this antigen. Okay, so through this APC and T cell interaction for activation. Initially, this LFA1 and ICAM1, they are binding like this, and then this MHC or TCR antigen peptide, they are located like this, and then after this activation, they are switched, and then what is the main role of this integrin and ICAM1 is to show very strong affinity to APC and immune T cell. So let's imagine when you are cultured a T cell, they normally suspend the cell with the activation. When they activate it, they start to attach on the culture dish. And then when the T cell, they feel like strong um, cell cell interaction through the outer, outer environment, maybe T cell feel like, oh, this is some bioemetic condition to boost the immune system. So T cell can activate, can boost their immune cytokine release. So we can mimic this kind of APC and T cell immune immune cell strong interaction through like material or shear flow or any kind of force from the external point of view. So nowadays from the 
CAR T cell or cancer killing T cell production, uh, the pharmaceutical company they want to utilize how they prime or condition T cell or secret many immune cytokines to kill the cancer cell. So nowadays people want to understand how and why this from the immune cell system also cell cell mechanical transduction is very important to regulate the immune response. So okay, so this let's look at in detail about this integrin uh, NFA1 and IK1. So this is some bent, which means inactive structure. And then when they are extended, which means they are ready for touch the ligand, this is some, you can imagine, T-cell membrane and integrin alpha and beta integrin set. And then extend closed. Closed means they are not activated enough. And when they are ac activated and then when they are open, this alpha chain and beta integrin, they are linked. And then through this link, this external ligand, they are tethered to the outermost protein of the alpha integrin. Okay, and then through this ligand and mechanical binded thing, and then this beta, they are closely linked to this uh, cytoskeleton through talin, kindrin, vinculin, this kind of focal desert complex, right? So you can imagine external ligand like ICAM1 and then this beta integrin and then cytoskeleton, they are strongly and physically link each other. So uh, from the previous study, they study about, they implant this tension sensor to the alpha and beta integrin C terminal, which means bottom side. And then even though the actin cytoskeleton is propagated, when they implant the tension sensor to the alpha, their detention sensor is not sensed because alpha cannot link to the cytoskeleton. Only beta integrin they can link to cytoskeleton through the focal the complex. So let's look at this is some T cell movie. When they are activated, sorry, this is some ICAM1 is deposited, coated on the TCP, and then uh, before they don't have any SF1. SF1 is another chemo attractor to boost the cell migration. Okay? So normal T cell they never attach, but when they when the cell when the cell can meet the ICAM1 coated culture dish, they start to attach and they migrate. This can mimic the, our uh, T cell infiltrating condition, right? You just remember the speed of the, this T cell. So, wire type, I can one. As step one, you feel like they are most, they are more like migrate from the this side to other side. Then this uh, BTS5, they implant the tension sensor to the location 5 around here. So I can one is normal coding. When they add STF1, they are more have more motility. But when the sensor is located to uh, number 6, the speed is slower than, slower than before, right? They not much move. Even though on the STF, uh, uh, STF1 alpha, the, this motility is not that much compared to previous BTS5. So here they mentioned that when they detention sensor, they are located to the bottom side, like C terminal, the T cell cannot migrate well. So, so this tension the tension location through this ICAM1 or actin binding is through the 
uh, upper side, not the bottom side. So scientists try to understand, okay, ICAM-1 is some kind of tethering, and the cytoskeleton, they are pulling and pushing, right? They ICAM-1, they cannot move. Through this cytoskeleton, the, this endocellular cell, uh, sorry, this, uh, this T cell can sense the outer environment, right? Only such skeleton they can move through the myosin 2, myosin 2A, right? So how the cell using the such skeleton they start to feel the this ICAM1 and integrates that affinity, right? Let's imagine this is not ICAM1, another like fibronectin, alpha CD34. Another protein, and then so the cell doesn't have any eye. They cannot recognize this is ICAM1, this is fibronectin. How would they feel? Through this cytoskeleton pulling and pushing, they feel the strong affinity between ICAM1 and this alpha integrin set. Right? So, from the next experiment, scientists they try to change this ICAM1 to another uh, cell adhesive protein. So to prove that the T cell ICAM1 and beta in this integrin binding is very important to increase some T cell motility to stop and then migrate to the tissue. So and then one important thing is that when the cell are migrate, what will happen? So they need some forward moving and then actin retrograde flow. So, so actin forward moving is that when this actin, this is global actin, and then when they polarize to affectin, cell can start to go forward, right? This is called forward movement of actin. But for moving forward, the cell needs some kind of back step, which is called actin retrograde flow. So let's imagine, okay, the actin can propagate to the uh, moving side, right? And then they are making new integrin set here. And then they have to uh, detach from this original integrin and then they have to attach new integrin, right? So what will happen? They have some small gap between non-muscle margin 2 link to, linking to the affectin and then this talin and catkindrin focus in the complex. And then for attaching this small gap, they need back step. Touch, and then they stabilize the focus in the complex and then they are more number, and then at the time, affectin is more propagated. And then another integrin set, they fill the ECM again, and then they backstep more focus and complex, and then affectin. Because why they need backstep? So when they fill the ECM and they start to migrate, they start to make this kind of integrin. They fill the ECM, right? But when they st start when they start to feel, oh, I'm very satisfactory to have more of a coordination here, after they feel like that, and then they have to make another affectin. Okay? So when they first make this affectin without this back step, oh, they the cell like, oh, I, I, this is the right way, and then they are losing their power to make more effective. So as a, some kind of, how can I say? They think about worst, worst scenario, maybe this vocal adhesion is not enough. There is an end point of the DCM, so I have to go back. So that's why they need this kind of system, retrograde and forward movement. So, when you look at this cell, this is some chemo chymography. Chymo chymography means that 
that cell are migrate over time, let's say 10 minutes, oh, this line, this line is pictured here, cut and put here, and then every one minute, they cut and move here. So this is some edge movement when they migrate to the single direction. So this is some protrusion affecting propagation. And then they go back, retraction. This is retrograde acting flow. Acting flow. And then they go, go further, back, go further, back, go further, back. So generally, their direction is go forward, right? But third time, they have retra retraction phenomenon. So when, when you plot this kind of thing, using so distance along edge, distance along edge through the uh, velocity. So red one is going forward and blue one is going backward. So in each line, they have backward and forward. So this distance along edge means that, let's say this is the distance, and then when you plot like this, plot like this, you can see this kind of trend. Also, you can make this kind of images through ImageJ using the special plugin. So when you detect this kind of single, single plane uh, images or movie, so this movie can be replotted like this kind of chymograph as a velocity. And then when you only look at the real-world acting flow map, which means just backward velocity, and then you can also plot like this. And then this is some nanometer per second. This is some speed of the active filament. So using your titanium or t t t TCP or different stiffness, or choose the appropriate cell line, and then you can plot, depending on your coating, stiffness, or any kind of structure, you can track this kind of velocity using chymography or movie. This can be very good start point. So when you increase some T cell migration on the, your own material, this can be also good. Or you can increase some uh, migration of the monocyte macrophage or neutrophil. Also, this can be also good to boost the initial immune response. So let's see the, this kind of YouTube for understanding your So this is some actin retrograde motion They little bit, little bit go front, right? But the movement is like continuously they backward. So this is a very good movie to understand actin retrograde motion. This is understanding of the effect in this global actin, they are spontaneous nucleation. Suddenly they feel like they have to make active polymerization.
they need two accessory protein, profilin, coflin. Inhibit nucleation, profilin. They cannot nucleate. They are single, single, not attaching. So they through this actin polymerization, they need also power. So that's why this actin accessory, they attaching the ATP actin, and then they change through the actin polymerization. Okay, one more time look at this. So when you culture the, your cell on certain condition, always the cell, inside of the cell, this kind of actin, polymerization, depolymerization, with the help of coffrin or prolin and ATP, actin, they happen all the time. So through this, your research, you have to imagine how you visualize this kind of system. So initially, you can observe the proline, they inhibit the actin nucleation, right? But through the actin filament formation, actin nucleation is not good. Actin should be uh, polymerized in certain one direction, so actin nucleation should be inhibited. So that's why the just, just random nucleation is not good for from the cell point of view. So when the proline when they meet the ATP, and then they feel like certain star signal, they are singly polymerized to through the one actin filament. And then after actin filament is assembled, the coflin they are disassociate this actin filament for doing the depolymerization. Depolymerization. One size doesn't fit at all.
Movement. It is essential to the function of animal cells. A type of immune cell, these lymphocytes migrate toward inflammatory signals as part of immune surveillance and defense. You see, the plasma membrane and the cell shape are constantly changing in order to achieve cell motility. How does this happen? Like a scaffold, this network of cytoskeletal fibers connects every corner of the cell and gives a cell its shape. Changes in cell shape rely heavily on one type of cytoskeletal protein, known as actin. The actin cytoskeleton is highly dynamic and its filaments continuously assemble and disassemble throughout the moving cell. The building block of the actin cytoskeleton is a small globular protein called G-actin, which is normally bound to ATP as a monomer. These ATP-bound G-actin monomers assemble, or polymerize, into filaments, known as F-actin, over three phases called nucleation, elongation, and steady state. Nucleation occurs as three ATP-bound G-actin monomers form trimers. Then rapid linear polymerization occurs in a process called elongation. G-actin can bind reversibly to either end of the growing filament, known as the barbed or plus end, and the pointed, or minus end, but monomers preferentially bind to the barbed end. Bound G-actin monomers undergo ATP hydrolysis, producing an increase of ADP-bound G-actins at the pointed end of the filament. These G-actins disassociate more readily than the ATP-bound G-actins at the barbed end of the filament. Thus, actin filaments undergo treadmilling, as the reaction reaches a steady state, G-actin monomers are constantly added to the barbed end and removed from the pointed end of the filament. At the leading edge of a moving cell, actin filaments are continuously treadmilling, branching off, and cross-linking. These activities push the plasma membrane, forming cell protrusions such as wide blunt projections called lamellopodia and narrow pointed projections called philopodia. Philopodia are formed by rapid elongation of parallel actin bundles regulated by elongation factors such as formin. Small cross-linking proteins such as alpha-actinin bind to these filaments and strengthen these parallel actin bundles. In lamellopodia, an actin binding protein complex, ARP23, binds near the leading end of newly formed actin filaments and nucleates branching. Large cross-linking proteins, such as filament, bind to these actin filaments and support the structure of this branched network. This continuous branching off and cross-linking strengthens the protrusive force needed to overcome the compressive force of the plasma membrane. As the cell moves forward, Adhesions occur along the leading edge of the cell as actin bundles anchor to the surface via adhesion molecules. These newly formed adhesions are connected to old adhesions via contractile stress fibers consisting of myosin filaments and antiparallel actin bundles. The cell is pulled forward mainly by contractile forces generated by myosin acting on the actin filaments. As the contractile fibers contract, 
the rear of the cell comes forward. These dynamic changes in the actin cytoskeleton occur in a fraction of a second and work in concert to facilitate the continuous cycles of cell protrusion, adhesion, and contraction. This enables cell motility, ultimately allowing lymphocytes to perform their duty of immune surveillance and defense. As you can see, this movie is very, very good, right? For understanding your whole picture of the uh, actin filament dynamics. So I'm, I'm sharing this YouTube and then you can look at this Medical Science Animation Center. You can see any other yeah, movie related to your project. So uh, we are almost finishing our lecture. So just briefly, how they people to prove the concept of the ICAM-1 and then LFA-1 integral set binding to the cell, from the T cell. So this is uh, how the tension sensor are located. From the top, this one. From the end, C terminal. So they found when the sensor are implanted, this middle part, three, four, five, are similar to the normal wire type integral set. And then when you look at the uh, uh, migration also, Wild type is similar to 345, but in case of 6, 7 terminal, they are decreased. This means that tension is mainly uh, sensed through this middle part of the beta integrin. Beta integrin. So they choose four, 4 or 5 as a control. So when you look at this migration motility using the trajectory, Trajectory means they plot how the each single cell they are uh, located. So without SDF, with SDF, wild type TS5 is similar, but TS6 somehow when the tension sensor are located, implanted in TS6 uh, location, they are damaged. So the migration decreases a lot. And at the same time, when they check the tension sensor how the tension is measured inside of the cell. So they are located 3, 5, and 6. The higher the red color means more power, like Pico Newton. So when they culture on ICAM-1, the T cell can feel more power, right? More reddish, but compared to fibronectin regardless of how the sensor is located. So this is images applied like this. So they are using flat protein, which can sense the power induced by the cell. So when the sensor is located from the upper part, there they show more power, around 1 to 2 piconewton, only on ICAM-1. But when the coating protein is changed to fibronectin, they never show any kind of force. So how the T cell can fill the ICAM-1? ICAM-1 is linked to the, their LFA-1 integrin, and then this, the actin, they pull and push. And then they, when they feel this kind of sensing through the actin tension, they feel like, oh, this is some time to connect ICAM-1 and my integrin. And then maybe from my T-cell point of view, I have to infiltrate to the tissue and then migrate. So T5, you can imagine just normal sensor. The normal sensor and then their damage sense. So end part, end part, the color is blue, means they, the cell, T cell cannot sense the power. But they are located in the right location around the middle. They feel the sense power. And when they culture on fibronectin using the TS5, the reddish color is not that much. And then a little increase in CD43, but uh, not higher compared to this ICAM-1. So this is plot in here. 
okay? So you got, they are located sensor upper parts three and five, highly power, but terminal low power and other fibronectin. Alpha is 43. They don't have, they cannot induce much power between integrin and ligand. So why is CD43? Fibronectin, you can imagine this is some mimic the after filtration, infiltration of the tissue. Tissue is mainly composed of fibronectin or collagen. So that is why they choose fibronectin as a coating protein. And then when, why alpha CD43? Alpha CD43 is a sort of kind of trace membrane molecule expressed highly in all leukocytes except the resting B lymphocyte, which means that this is some this mimics some cell to cell interaction between the T cell and other other leukocyte, other lymphocyte. So and then let's imagine this structure. So integrin in here. Uh, sorry, this should be reversed. So let's say effect in here and this focal adhesion integrin here, right through cell membrane, and then. When the force is sensed by the integrin and actin filament through its actin myosin contractility, the cell feels certain force, right? So in this literature, they mentioned that this not alpha, only beta, and especially this uh, ending part, this, uh, upper part of the beta set is important to sense some external force, not the C-terminal. So they using this kind of actin and uh, some integrin set. This is actin and integrin. So you can imagine okay, this is some basal line. Basal line means they are using two different color bead, and then they plot in the same manner, but they have 20 nanometer difference. So over 20 nanometer, they are same located, but 20 nanometer is wrongly expressed. So that's why from the G position, G position of actin and actin red color and green integrin, when the chain is over 20, which can be true difference. So let's say when this T cell are cultured on ICAM coated one, so this uh, integrin is a little bit down located compared to actin. So when you imagine this cell, so, so at the cell membrane, actin is more inside, right? Integrin is more outside. So this is reversed. Integrin, integrin, integrin is outside structure and actin is inside structure. Okay? So, but, so which means that when these T cells are tensioned, the integrin is more uh, down, like, down positioned compared to actin. Because through this ECM and this ICAM and then integrin, they are cross link physically. And through this myosin contractility, maybe actin is more far away to the inside of cell direction. But when this T cell in the same manner, but located in fibronectin coating one, they, have, they don't have any power to between the fibronectin and integrin and linked to the actin. So that's why this integrin is more highly upstream located compared to actin. So let's say this is some major, right? And then the, this integrin is linked to the ICAM and then they are tethered to the ICAM ligand and then inside of actin they push and pull. And through this mechanism, actin is more far away located. So actin is lo location located upper side, which means 
is integrating in located downside. But in other, this fibronectin coating one, there is no tension between fibronectin and NFA1, our integrin in T cell. So this down located integrin is not positioned to the down, but they are rather uh, they are repositioned to the upper side because they don't have any power. So this is located plotted like in this manner. So I came on coating one through this I came on a strong integrin T cell binding. The integrin is more down regulated compared to actin layer. Actin layer is more close to the cell nucleus position. But in case of fibronectin on alpha CD43 coated TCP, the T cell they cannot sense, they cannot make some force between this uh, ligand and their integrin. So their integrin sets are located near the actin layer. So bottom line, they propose like this. So this is an ICAM one expressed from the endocellular cell, right? This is our T cell, alpha and beta integrin. Okay? This is inside of cell. This is some outer cellular matrix. So outer cell area from the T cell point of view. So when they I can one approach, and then they start to ready for having actin polymerization using kindling and tallin complex, right? After attaching ICAM1 and tether to the endocellular cell, the T cell, they start to push and pull. Okay, push and pull. And then this bandit extended closed beta set is stretched. Stretch. And then from the stretch, this beta set, beta integrin, they feel some tension. When they feel some tension, they, this T cell feel like, oh, I finally attached the ICAM1. And then this cell can migrate more near this uh, ICAM1 expressed T, uh, endocellular cell layer, and then they can penetrate to the tissue. But when they are losing the, this focalization complex or actin polymerization, this stretch beta set is closed. And finally, they are deactivated, ending. Okay. So as a final figure, let's see uh, uh, read one by one this figure legend. Model for actin-dependent integral activation in cell migration in T cell. Inactive RFA1, alpha, L, and beta1 is neither bound to IK1 on the extracellular side, nor linked to actin on the success plasma side. Number two, tallin and kindle link acting to the cytoplasmic tail of the beta 2 subunit. They are binding here. When LFA1 binds, I can 1. This LFA1 complex, I can 1. Excited to simultaneously here. And then tension force exerted to across LFA stabilize the high affinity conformation of the or domain, AL domain bound through its internal ligand to the BL domain with open head piece conformation and swing up. So they complex and then this arrow, you feel like they are down located, which was proved by previous uh, images. And then they are tension, they are more tension. So they, this beta set is stretched. So also, this is also down regulated together because they are cross-linked physically. And then 4 and 5, when intercellular link to the actin is lost, the open headpiece conformation is no longer stabilized, and then integrin return to its lower energy, bent closed conformation. So from the integrin point of view, this bent inactive form and this extended closed extend the open form, which one is more stable? So when this cell have highly 
integrally activated, they always have to use energy, which is not stable. So this is more stabilized one, which means when you look at the integrin, maybe most of the integrin is uh, bent, closed. But only if necessary, this integrin is open and then activated. The stability of the state is likely more relevant than the order of binding and formation change. Previously, we have shown that NF1 integrin set has 1004 lower affinity for ICAM1 in the band closed and extended closed conformation than in the extended open conformation, which means extended open conformation has 1000 times higher affinity between ICAM and NFA1. So this is more high affinity. Yeah. And then the bent closed conformation is more populated. Bent closed. This is more populated all the cell surface than other states under resting condition. It should be true, right? Because when they always activate it, it's not good for the cell. They are in the resting position. This is so should be dominant. If necessary, this integrin should be uh, extended and then opened. But rapid kinetic exchange between the three conformation states at summer equilibrium like result in significant population of extended close is an open state in basal condition. Under basal condition, individual integrin molecule may exchange thousands of time per second between conformation states, enabling them to sample contraction tension binding to adapter and ectodomin binding to ECM ICAM1. This process would enable a present existing extended integrin conformation to bind ICAM1 and active adapter at the same time. Once pulling on the integrin by cytoskeleton meet the resistance from ICAM1 anchored to the surface of another cell, tension for exerted on the integrin between the ligand and curl point and the polymerase actin stabilizes the open high affinity integrin conformation. So, they feel like they have these three, four, five, they have three stages. But this is dominant, this is not dominant. But they are highly exchange each other because these T cells always are ready for sensing the ICAM1 to infiltrate to the endocellular cell to reach the tissue. So, in, in, the, in this context, they mentioned they are highly. Uh, interchangeable, but they are more stable. And then once this ICAM and then this integrin is physically linked, and then the cell sends the tension, and then the T cell are ready for migrate and infiltrate the tissue. Okay, uh, this is some summary of the, our, our previous literature. So you can imagine. So this three things, low, intermediate, high affinity, confirmation chain. For confirmation high affinity, they have very small, small binding ligand physically through this uh, integrin and ligand structure. And then through this ICAM NF1, the cell can sense the extracellular matrix through the uh, banded, uh, sorry, extended and open. And then this extended open tension sensor they cell can activate this low bug and lock pathway to start their T cell activation of behavior. But from the other mechanical point of view, from the chemical point of view, through this chem attractor, through GPCR or TCR, TCR, induction of intracellular signaling cascade also they can mediate this kind of uh, integrin and down signaling affinity. So this integrin set also are affected by uh, chemical cascade, as well as uh, physical cascade. Then you can imagine the synergistic. This chem attractor and the ICAM NF1 interaction physical, they can boost this kind of low fog lag signal. Okay. So for the next uh, next week. Uh, we are going to. Yeah, you are, you guys have to prepare certain uh, 
PPT regarding this paper. So you guys already familiar with this paper about the elastic elasticity direct stem cell in its specification, but we want to look at the previous literature for starting this study. This study was published 2006 in Cell, but what, uh, how the scientists or mechanobiologists found other phenomena to have this kind of idea. So, we, you guys, we, got, we study each other. I highlight the important paper after looking at their title and journal. So you guys pick up one by one by yourself, and then you can prepare one or two pages after reading the paper. Even though you cannot understand everything about the, on the paper, it's okay. But you can deliver the key point. And then when you guys present each other, and then when we combine 20 paper, and then we can image, imagine how at that time, Maybe they start the experiment 2004 or 2003. How they start, how they design their uh, experiment based on previous paper. So you can imagine how you can make some cell, how, how you can start the experiment for publishing your results in the cell journal. So one, two, three, four, five, or any kind of, I upload in our lecture cacao talk so you can pick up one by one by yourself yeah, majorly from this yellow highlighted one or yeah, highlight one and then prepare one or two pages to highlight how this previous work can be related to our this cell journal okay so this is our schedule Last lecture with you guys, and then 15th final exam. Okay, thank you.